Okay, let's talk about forces and gravity. The essential question is, what is a force and what are some examples of forces? Okay, sorry, that's my Darth Vader impression. Hopefully you get the joke because he uses the force. Okay, I'll stop. All right, I want you to make two uh, little small columns on force and net force. Force, simply put, is a push or a pull. This uh, little stick figure guy here is exerting a force. He's pushing there and he's pulling there. Those are both examples of forces. So a force can cause an object to start moving, stop moving, or change its speed or direction. That's all a force is. Just speed it up, slow it down, or change that speed and direction. Forces are measured in a, a unit called the Newton, uh, which we write as just a capital N, and the reason we write it as capitalized is because it was named after an old dead white guy, specifically Sir Isaac Newton. So we would say this one has a lot of force, it has a lot of Newtons, whereas this one doesn't have a lot, it doesn't have a lot of Newtons, that's our unit. So, net force is all of those forces added together. When you say net, it kind of means total, as in like someone's net worth is all of the money they have, like all of the money that they saved minus all the money that they owe, all of that together. So net force is all of those forces added together. When you have something called a balanced force, this means that the forces are equal in size and opposite in direction. And this means there's no change in motion. So here we have this truck. This truck is just, uh, you know, trucking along. It's got 100 newtons of force from the engine pushing it forward and 100 newtons of force from the wind pushing it back. This doesn't mean that it's not moving. It just means that there is no change in motion. It's not speeding up, it's not slowing down, and it's not changing either of those. It could be going on at 60 miles an hour, but there is no change in that motion. It's not getting faster, it's not getting slower. They are balanced. So, the truck does not speed up or slow down. So these two tigers here fighting over that meat, they are balanced. They are equal in size and they are opposite in direction and there is no change. So in this case, they are not moving, but it just basically means there's no change in it. Now let's talk about unbalanced forces. When you have an unbalanced force, they are not equal or they are not opposite. So in this case right here, we have a horse in a tug of war, and that is clearly an unbalanced force. Way more force going to the left than there is to the right. That's not even a contest. So as you can tell, this causes a change in motion. It speeds up, it slows down, or it changes. So anytime you have an unbalanced force, there's a change in motion. So here's that same truck. There's a bigger force pushing it to the right. That engine is working really hard, putting 100 newtons of force to the right, and the wind resistance isn't that strong. It's only 60 newtons to the left. So there's a net force of 40 going to the right, which means the truck will <clears throat> sorry, accelerate in that direction. It will still be moving, but in this case it will be accelerating to the right. Here we have the force of gravity on the moon. This is a very famous experiment. A guy is dropping a hammer and a feather. And in this case right here, the force of gravity is pulling them both down. And the reason they fall at the same rate is just that there's no air and everything falls at the same rate. All right, so let's talk about gravity, which is, of course, a force. Gravity is the force of attraction between any two masses. Here I have mass one, and here I have mass two, and you'll notice that this arrow is pushing them together. There is a force that pushes them together or pulls them toward each other. Here's the famous gravitational equation, and that D represents the distance. But there's a force on this one here to the left, and a force on this one here to the right. On Earth, we represent this as a downward force, and it's acting toward the center of the Earth. It's not that there's something special at the center of the Earth that we're all pulled toward, but that's the center of mass. So on average, we are pulled toward the center of the Earth. But you can still be on the other side of the globe, and you're, it's not, you're, you're not going to fall off because the force of gravity is pulling you toward the center. So that's how we represent gravity on Earth. Here you can see an object in orbit, even though it's still moving around, its velocity is going in this case to the right and now down. The acceleration of gravity is always pulling it toward the Earth, that's why it doesn't fly off into the nether regions of space. So, if you're looking for a pickup line, and I know you all are, you could say, excuse me, but I'm really attracted to you, and according to Newton's laws of gravitation, you're attracted to me too. That would technically work. The person might also say, yes, but you're also attracted to the stool, and you're also attracted to the dog outside, and you're also attracted to the garbage can, and then they're really smart. Um, so science can cut both ways. But either way, everything is attracted to everything else. 
Now, I was stopping in a truck one day driving home, and I saw this picture here, and it just stopped me thinking about gravity. This is an advertisement for Sherwin-Williams paint, saying, cover the earth. Please don't cover the earth in paint. That's not good for the earth. But there's something wrong with this picture here. What bothers me is what we just talked about. You should be attracted to the center. There's no reason for the drips to be falling down off the earth. There is no off the earth. They should all be like, yes, it might spread, but it should not be dripping off. It should be, of course, there should be gravity pulling it to the center. Just something that made me think about it. All right, make two columns for mass and weight. This is the remainder of our notes. Mass is how much of an object there is. We measure this in kilograms. So, hey, you've put on a little bit of mass. Oh, thank you for noticing, splash. That was not a nice thing to say. You are measuring that in kilograms. Weight is different. Weight is the force of gravity acting on an object, and we measure that in newtons. You might think that those are pretty much the same thing, except mass doesn't change. Weight does. When you go to other planets, your weight will change. Here we have an astronaut on uh, Earth. His mass is 120 kilograms. That's somewhere in the 200 to 300 pound range because those spacesuits are heavy. On Earth, we have to multiply that by Earth's gravity, which is about 10 uh, meters per second squared. We'll talk about that more later. But his weight is 1,200 newtons. Now, if he goes to the moon, the uh, gravity there is one-sixth of that of Earth. His mass has not changed. It's still 120 kilograms, still 120 kilograms, but because of that one-sixth smaller, that means his weight is significantly lower, only 200 newtons. So mass does not change. No matter where you are, you have the same mass. Weight depends upon gravity, and gravity can fluctuate depending upon where you are.